Boom! Good morning, everybody. Today is September 21st. Dr. Vong here with your Boom COVID update. Um, you know, numbers are, are plateauing a little bit around the 140,000, 145,000 range. We're doing, we're doing okay, but I think it's a temporary pause. In the news today, however, J&J announced at a second booster shot, a second shot two months after the first shot, got the efficacy of the J&J vaccine up to 94%, which is on par with the two shots of Moderna and Pfizer, which, you know, makes me wonder, like, why didn't you just do like a two shot to begin with? New data from Pfizer that says their third booster shot, you know, we're worried about the waning efficacy of the, of the um, Pfizer, but the booster shot really gets it back up to 95, 96%. And um, the efficacy is measured, this is really important, by how much neutralizing antibodies they form. And that's really what's the key. That's what the neutralizing antibodies are the ones that help you fight off the virus, the, the, the disease. Um, so good news for people who had the J&J. Don't panic. It's early data. Um, they have not submitted it yet. They will probably submit it here the next month or so. And then um, that will probably get uh, approved. The Pfizer data, uh, new data on kids from 5 to 11 years old is very promising. So um, it's one third of the dose. So they're not just little people. They test it at one third of the dose. So the uh, Pfizer um, vaccine normally has 30 micrograms of RNA in it. Um, for the kids, it's 10. So they cut it down by a third and they measured not only like disease process, but also they tested everybody with the um, neutralizing antibodies. And they found that these kids between the ages of 5, 11, when compared to the 16 to the uh, 12 to uh, 18 year olds, they also, they have similar levels of neutralizing antibodies. So really good news. That will probably get submitted um, to the FDA here in the next week or so. And I, I bet you because of schools um, opening and everything and parents are being really concerned, teachers are being concerned that um, FDA will, will will review this data pretty quickly and maybe the earliest shots will probably be beginning in november halloween if we're lucky but probably november and remember pfizer's two doses so let's say beginning of november first dose beginning of december second dose and so that really gets into the holiday season now you're really talking about having young kids protected um hopefully the uh, the, the grandparents are protected it's really these 20s and 30 year old somethings that are, have problems, man. They really need to get on board. Um, the other thing that's kind of surprising to me was, um, you know, the teenagers have some of the lowest vaccination rates. It's weird, you know, like 46% um, of them, well, you know, 46% here in the United States um, of teenagers that are eligible to be vaccinated are vaccinated. 46, we got to get that number up, you know. So one of the things we need to do is hold that carrot. Be like, hey, if you want to see grandma or grandpa, or grandma and grandpa want to see you this Christmas, go get vaccinated. You know, tell your 13-year-old, tell your 15-year-old. My 15-year-old is vaccinated, and she hasn't grown her tail yet. You know, she hasn't grown a tail yet. I know, I'm I'm real disappointed. I, you know, I got my second dose beginning of May, and I, I don't have a tail yet. I'm just, I'm like, dude, what happened? <laughs> so, uh, good news on the, on the front, and I have a five-year-old. So, um, once this gets approved, Erica, Erica's like, Man, I, I can't wait to get her, you know, vaccinated. So, so there's a good chance we'll have normal Christmas. So not only holidays, but but uh, you know, travel, international travel, plane travel. You feel much safer uh, when that happens. I don't think there will ever be a federal mandate here in the United States for airplanes. You need to be vaccinated for airplanes. Um, but you know, that'll be up to the airline companies. You know, they they have enough bad behavior happening. Um, that we, we you know we gotta get our shit together man so i'm gonna tell you right now today september 21st our fall surge is really going to be dependent on on how how quickly uh we can all get on board with this vaccination and what you're going to see is a huge separation between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated it's going to be even worse and and icus and hospitals are at bricks you're seeing it on facebook you're seeing people post things about you know, friends and family members who can't get ICU beds, people they know, maybe someone had a heart attack or a stroke and they're stuck in the ER, you know, there's no beds. Or, you know, one of Erica's friends got 
hospitalized with COVID. And I said, that's not good. If, they've, if they're hospitalizing her, that means they don't feel good treating her um, at home. So she's sick. You need to really check in on her and hope she's getting better. She's getting better. So, oh, and updated my daughter who had a positive exposure. She's fine. She has no symptoms. Uh, it's been six days with a Delta variant. Remember replication with a Delta variant is four days. So instead of, instead of the normal seven days with wild type, that's why Delta is a whole different disease, man. Like you can't think of it as the same. Remember Delta variant, um, wild type SARS-CoV-2 took seven days, seven days to, um, you know, prodrome. And then, uh, but Delta is only four days. And if wild type would, you could spread it to maybe four people. Um, the Delta variant, you could spread it to seven to eight people. That's why it's much more contagious. All right, so stay safe, everybody. Let's, let's get vaccinated so we can have a good, good fall holiday season this year. Cool. See you tomorrow with another COVID update.